everybody, I'm Kendall Gammon, and today we are on location in the historic West Bottoms of Kansas City, and we are doing something that is very, very different. We are in the studio of one Mr. Mike Devis. Mike, I know you're getting ready to go here, um, but uh, first of all, we appreciate you having us of course. Uh, here today. This yep. is just a fabulous place uh, as we look around, so many wonderful things. But yep. you know, to give folks a, a, an idea of what we're talking about today and uh, what you do, you are an artist, but you are a performance painter. Correct. Tell me about that. What is a performance painter? Yeah, so a performance painter is a little bit different than your traditional painter. A traditional painter is somebody who uh, is maybe commissioned uh, uh, to create a piece of work um, by any given client, and that uh, piece of art is created kind of in private behind the closed doors in their personal studio, and once that piece is completed, uh, then the uh, piece is then given to the individual that commissioned the piece uh, when, it's, when it's done. A uh, performance painter uh, is quite different. So a performance painter is somebody who creates their art live in front of an audience. Okay. And oftentimes it's a form of entertainment uh, and it can be used in a variety of different settings or venues. Awesome. Well, you know what? I, I can't wait because I've seen some of the videos, but to be here. Now, we're doing something, folks, we're doing something a little bit different here and something that Mike's never done, which is I'm going to interview him and we're going to talk about this while he's actually doing a painting. Then when we're done, we're going to see the finished product. And I'm going to guess, I don't know who you're painting. I know who you're not painting, which is me. Um, <laughs> okay. You won't be painting me, but I'm looking forward to it. So we can just start going with there. You, you, you keep bet. getting ready and, and uh, we'll just start with this. You painted all across the nation. And you've even done a few things internationally. Correct. Um, when you're doing this, yep. uh, it, what's going through your mind when you start? Because you know, lots of times you've got music going, you've got a crowd going. Uh, what what right. what is happening with you? Yeah. So uh, I get this question every once in a while. It's like, what are you thinking about when you're painting? Uh, oftentimes, I'm on stage in front of a live audience and I know that I've been brought to a particular venue to entertain the crowd and create a piece of artwork that might be auctioned off or uh, you know given to an organization afterwards so what's going through my mind is uh, just look like you're having fun you're here to entertain the crowd right. uh, and then also focus on the piece that's being created because you know I, I want the the piece to even though it's going to be created in in a matter of minutes, I want it to look as good as possible. And so I'm focusing on the image. I'm focusing on uh, giving that image shape and form and uh, just making it look as good as I can in the limited time I have to produce it. Okay, so as you continue now, going back in, in time a little bit, Yep. Uh, at one point in time you were, as you said, a mainstream art artist and you took your time and. Yep. And then it was suggested, uh, if I remember right, that maybe you think about doing something like this. And at first, uh, that wasn't something that you really that you really embraced, was it? It was not. Uh, the way this came about many years ago, I was uh, creating traditional art. I was doing commission pieces for a living. And out of the blue, I got a phone call from an individual here in Kansas City, Missouri, uh, who was putting on an event. And... He was wanting to uh, add a little bit of spice to his conference, and he knew I was an artist in town, and he asked me if I would have any interest in coming to the conference and creating a piece of artwork live on stage. Yes. And uh, I was, uh, I'm kind of a private guy and not necessarily looking to get on a stage and be... Uh, kind of the center of attention, but uh, so my initial thought was, you know, this doesn't really sound like something that fits me and what I do and who I am, and so I turned it down, and uh, he just challenged me before we got off the phone to, you know, to give it some, to give it some thought. Right. Now, I, I think it's interesting. I do a piece called Make a Difference, so we're to the segment now where I, where it's about making a difference. That's what I think we as human beings want to do is help others. And can you talk mm -hmm. about in your life, since you've started do, doing this, yep. I mean, you make a difference in so many different ways, I think, because 
you do this for so many different organizations. Can you expand on that a little bit? Uh, sure. So, you know, again, I have the opportunity to uh, paint, like you said, for many different types of organizations, crowds, audiences, venues, and many of those um, organizations are charities here in Kansas City or, or beyond. So I, I would say one way that uh, this has allowed me to, to make a small difference is I will go to uh, a charity event who hires me mm -hmm. and I will create uh, anywhere from one to three paintings live on stage throughout the evening of a charity event. And those paintings are then auctioned off uh -huh. uh, during the live auction segment okay. of the program. And, uh, and that those proceeds, that money is going to that particular charity. And so I would say that's one way I've been able to make uh, a small impact or small difference right. with my gift as an artist. Another way uh, I would say that I make a difference is um, just using my gift and encouraging others. I believe everyone is, is born with talents and gifts. Mm -hmm. We oftentimes, uh, especially in the arts, we're not sure what we can do with those gifts right. or talents. Right. So I think it's important that we see other people that have had success as a painter or a musician or a speaker or, gosh, any number of gifts that we have. A long snapper? A football <laughs> long snapper. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> of how to, how to use those gifts, right. be successful, and then also, I think more importantly, inspire others to, to do good with their talents. And I think, uh, you know, I've been able to paint at school assemblies and youth conferences and, and uh, all kinds of different, uh, in front of all kinds of uh, different kinds of audiences and mm -hmm. for organizations. Oftentimes I'll be approached by uh, a person afterwards, a young person, and they'll say, you know, I, I love art and you've kind of encouraged me just through your, through your presentation to, uh, to get back in to what I love to do. I, I never thought that I could uh, make a difference or use my talent, my gift uh, to make a living. And just by seeing somebody else who uh, has been blessed with some success right. encourages others. Yep. So I uh, like that. And let's unpack that a little bit mm -hmm. because as I was driving over uh, today, I wondered, okay, <clears throat> for me, having played in the NFL for 15 years and being a long snapper, okay. uh, I think you can teach anybody to do it in high school. If you work hard at it, you maybe could do it in college. Right. But I think to really do it at the highest level, there has to be some gift there that you were born with. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly, this is something that you were born with. Um, yeah. Do you recognize that? Uh, at what point did you embrace that? I mean, did you? I mean, I don't think people. I know I didn't grow up thinking I was going to be a long snapper. Right. Did you grow up thinking you were going to be an artist all of a sudden, or uh, I guess when did that come to mind? And also, yep. the inspiration in terms of uh, at what point do you decide? Okay, I know this is a little bit different, but this is what I love. This is what I'm about. This is what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, oftentimes, I'm asked the question. And this kind of fits into your question as well, is when did you first realize that, uh, that you loved art, that you enjoyed it? And some of my earliest memories go back to when I was five and six years old. Really? And uh, I look back then, I, my parents used to invite my neighbor friends over, and of course they would get out all the art supplies and we would just have at it. But I think a lot of kids are that way. We're creative, uh -huh. we have no inhibitions, we're not, we have no fear, right. we, we're proud of everything we make, even if we can't recognize what it is. Mm -hmm. And our parents celebrate that, which is great. Uh, but I got a little bit older and started uh, junior high and high school and uh, that's when I really began to notice where my love and my passion was. Um, because I would fill my electives with art classes. Um, that was where I was comfortable. That's where I recognized my gifts and talents. But to answer your question, I didn't really think then, hey, I'm going to be an artist. Like a lot of kids, I wanted to be like yourself. I wanted to be a professional athlete. Right. Uh, I loved baseball. I was a baseball nut growing up. Uh -huh. So that's where 
kind of my dreams were. Uh, but, you know, after high school, I, I recognized that I didn't really have the gifts and talents that were going to take me to the next level. And that's when I started to focus on the possibility of uh, using my, my talents as an artist as a possible career. Mm -hmm. But even after college, where I was an art major, I didn't have all the answers. I really didn't know right. what direction I was going to go. I was basically doing art because I loved it. I was an art major because that's where my talents uh, and gifts kind of uh, exceeded other things that I might be interested in. Right. Uh, so it's, it's been quite the journey. I didn't always have all the answers. I didn't know where I was going to end up or where my art was going to take me. But uh, I just I knew it was something I loved. I could recognize. And back then, uh, you know, now and even back then, reflecting back to when I was a kid, it's something that's been there since the very beginning. OK, very nice. OK, so I want to move on to a segment that I call the power of gratitude. Sure. Uh, I think we all have things that we're grateful for. I mean, you and I think just now we discussed the fact that we're grateful for some of the skills that we've been given, but mm -hmm. I'm curious in general, are there some specific times, uh, moments, uh, places, uh, people in your life that, mm -hmm. that especially come to mind when I talk about gratitude? Gosh, uh, in relation to my artwork mm -hmm. and creativity, it's really been a long journey mm -hmm. and it's, it's, uh, it's not always been easy. Right. And so when I think about gratitude, I think about uh, the gift, gift of friendship. friendship. And I've, I've got some wonderful friends that have really helped me out in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, as I've struggled as an artist early on, uh, where they allowed me to rent space out of their house for, for very cheap, or they, you know, uh, they believed in me and encouraged me uh, to keep going, to, to use my gifts. Uh, uh, even though I didn't have all the answers right. and I might not be showing success at that time. I've just been blessed in so many ways through relationships and friendships uh, that have allowed me to continue uh, putting one foot in front of the, uh, in front of the other year after year right. uh, until I was able to kind of stand on my own as a successful artist. So those friendships and relationships that I've had in the past is something that I'm really grateful for. And, and as I look back, I think if I'm honest with myself, I wouldn't be here today without some of those great, great friends that, that believed in me. Yeah, I, th I think that's a great point. Uh, you know, I think the realization that we never do anything on our own, that there's mm -hmm. always somebody helping out in some form or fashion, I think is uh, very important. That's why I try to espouse the, uh, the attitude of gratitude as much as possible. So now here, you uh, clearly, it, it doesn't bother you to get it a little bit messy. I look at your clothes, I look at the carpet. Right. Um, yeah. Take me into... For you, game day, when generally the music's blaring a little bit sometimes and yep. you're, you're paying to that, and um, you've got the artistic manner of it going, yep. uh, but it's a high energy moment as well. I mean, it, I can make a little bit of a par parallel of maybe being in the middle of Arrowhead and, 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 <laughs> and playing a game. I mean, what do you think of then? Are you, are you completely and wholly focused on the piece itself? Are you ever, d does it ever come to mind, okay, I'm doing this for such and such cause, and um, uh, maybe the, the good that it's going to do when you get done with this and it's auctioned off for charitable uh, contribution? Uh, of course, of course. Uh, I will say though, in the heat of the moment, right. I'm, just, I'm just focused on, on, the, uh, on the task at hand. Right. And you know, I would think, uh, I've, I've never been a, a gifted long snapper, Right. but I, Oftentimes you have to when you're you when do. you when you're, you have to clear when, the mechanism. It comes have, from a uh, uh, from, from right. a movie, I think, with Kevin Costner, so, and that's why I was asking because sure. you know I think sometimes you know people talk about life balance and you always have everything uh, in your mind, but you know sometimes when you're really going after something, uh, that was a nice pirouette, by the way. I'm like, thank you. Don't think I'm not. I've got a little dance to do. But uh, at certain points in times, you've really got to clear the mind and be focused on what's going on. I know for me. Whenever I was out on the middle of the field, if there was anything on my mind other than snap, block, and tackle, yep. um, that's when things were going to maybe go wrong. Mm -hmm. So this has got to be gratifying, I would think. It's got to be fun. I see you. I mean, I see the pirouettes here and whatever. Um, I'm starting to get an idea of this. Maybe I have, 
I, I see the face, I see the nose. Yep. Um, it's clearly a person, but yep. um, getting to this point, I mean, for me as a long snapper, I, I, I snap day in, day out for, for years getting ready for stuff. Right. You're clearly gifted, you can do this, but is this something that, that, that you practice? I mean, the, the particular uh, images themselves beforehand, or is this just right in the moment? Great question. That is that is a question that I get often. Is uh, you know how do you do that? And right. Uh, and to take it a step further, oftentimes at events I have uh, here I'm painting on a canvas that's uh, you know taped to the wall. But oftentimes at an event I'll have my my canvas uh, to a special um, right a special easel and, uh, easel and, and frame. Spin it yeah, I can spin right. it. And so. Uh, there's a little bit more of an element to a live performance, and people ask that question, how do you do what you do? And, and kind of the short answer is, is practice. And any, uh, any image that I paint live, uh, I'm going to rehearse it ahead of time. Gotcha. And so I think oftentimes, mistakenly so, people think artists are miracle workers. You just give them, hey, right. paint this on, on the spot. Well, not everybody can do that, especially when you're going to be in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to be as prepared as, as you can uh, yes. before you take that stage so you can give the best presentation that you, that, that, that you possibly can. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's an important lesson is, is people understanding that, that nothing happens by accident. And you do have to have preparation and have a plan in mind. Uh, starting to th think, uh, I think I see uh, some Chiefs red. You better believe it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, <laughs> uh, a man after my own heart. <laughs> And, and I, I believe that uh, this piece will actually, uh, you're doing this for us so we can, we can uh, film this and, and make kind of a different uh, yep. feature, but this is going to be auctioned off for an event with Duran Cherry, is that correct? That is correct. So this piece that I'm creating right now is going to be, uh, I'm going to take this uh, uh, to the establishment on Sunday night. Uh, the Duran Cherry Foundation is going to have right. uh, an event. Uh, this coming Sunday night when the Chiefs play the Raiders and uh, we're going to auction off this piece uh, for the charity and uh, we're hoping for great results. I had a chance not too long ago uh, to talk with Ron and we did some uh, a make a difference and a power of gratitude with him and sure. uh, you talk about somebody who's just doing some great things so that, that's got to be fun and I, I just think it would be neat. I mean you, you've, you've experienced so much. You and I met by chance uh, I, I think on a plane trip, you were going down to Tampa but to paint something. I yep. don't know where I was going at the time. And um, we just kind of struck up this friendship. But I think it was uh, as I learned what you did. And I, okay, I think, folks, are you starting to see this? Are you starting to get an idea of what we're thinking here? But uh, I just thought it would be interesting. It was something that was so very, very unique. Um, is yours going? Yep. As you go after this, and you start to get to a different point. Uh, do, do you do things in order? Do you try to keep some suspense uh, for folks uh, to try to, I guess, keep it a secret as long as possible? You try to. Uh -huh. You try to. Some images are a little bit easier to do that with right. when, than, than others. Yep. Uh, but yeah, you try to, uh, uh, to keep the suspense, and that's what makes it more entertaining and more fun for right. the audience to, to, uh, to view. I think once I get to the headband on this particular individual, people start to recognize. I saw it. I, uh, uh, that, that gives you an idea. Had you done the hair first, I might have. Yeah. I might have started, started thinking Prince because I know you've done Prince before. I, but uh, no, it is not him. Although uh, this guy is, well, he's not a Prince. I would say he's uh, characterized as the king right now. Um, yes. Good things. Uh, I'm just going to let you paint a little bit as we, we watch this. Okay. Obviously, a football slant with the, with the Chiefs, and I mean, I was just thinking here. I mean, I would be more of an abstract art guy. I'm, I'm thinking, what if I just dip the 
the, the tip of footballs in paint and, <laughs> and snapped them at the wall and we saw what we, what we came up with. I think everybody that, would be more than a little bit surprised about that one. That would probably be a first. I don't know if that's ever been done before. <laughs> that, that, uh, well, you know, you got to keep people on you, their toes. Well, that, that would do it. And this guy certainly keeps his, his, uh, his people on his toes as you never know where uh, the ball's going to go on the field. That's true. Yep, he has certainly captured the imagination of the city and, and even the entire country. So I'm very fortunate to have Patrick Mahomes here in Kansas City and on our team. Now, would it be safe to say that uh, this is a, uh, a pain that you've done uh, a fair amount of times? It's fairly popular right now? This is very popular right now. Uh, anytime I paint at a charity especially, uh -huh. the conversation always comes up, you know, what, what should we paint? And I say, well, really the, uh, the idea of creating something for a charity is to bring proceeds to that charity and you know what's going to make people spend a little bit of money and nowadays right now everybody wants a picture of Patrick Mahomes and so this is definitely an image that I've created Now this is uh, more than a few times. This has been out a, a, a little bit on social media in different uh, uh, places. Has, mm -hmm. to your knowledge, uh, is Patrick aware that you're that you've done uh, some of these paintings of him? Um, not to my knowledge. Well, I'm going to guess that after, uh, I'm going to guess that he's going to be aware of this one at some point, which I think is interesting. But yeah, I guess not to your knowledge, but he, that he could have. He could have. We'll forgive sure. him for focusing on football right now, right? <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. If you know anybody that uh, knows him by chance that could maybe inform him, I would be forever grateful. I'm sure. Well, absolutely. I think we will have to do that because uh, I think he would think that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if that's me anymore, uh, but uh, we may have a few contacts here and there that okay. we can see what's going on. Now... You said you practiced this, but the fact yep. is it's art. And, Correct. Uh, while the main image is the same, certainly there's probably little nuances each and every time that uh, mm -hmm. I would think would change from piece to piece. Yes. How yep. about as you look back in your career and how many years you've been doing this, mm -hmm. is there a, a favorite venue that you painted at? Is there a favorite uh, piece that you painted? Oh gosh! Um, yeah, some of the some of the fun, unique uh, venues that I've been able to paint at uh, would include the uh, oh gosh, the uh, KC Live in Paralight District oh, on, yes. on the stage there, which oh, was wow. great. When you're on that stage and you look out mm -hmm. at the crowd and just the uh, the visual that you get of you know the restaurants and the bars, right. it's just uh, it, it's it's That's just perfect. Almost amphitheater like. It's very area. stimulating. That's yeah. right. So that was uh, been able to but, paint but there. Intimate at the yep. same time. Yep. And the uh, what is it? The uh, Everest Bank, um, the Midland Mid Theater. Oh yes. Been okay. able to paint at the Midland Theater. Very nice. On a handful of occasions. That's a great, beautiful, old theater here in Kansas City, and uh, and actually been able to paint at Arrowhead, on a few different occasions. Right. Well, you know, now that I think about it, I think you went down to Pittsburgh State University and did a couple paintings of, of, of the almighty gorilla. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that. I can't believe I start with that. I was going to say that next. Okay. I can't. Uh, yeah, you kind of ruined the surprise uh, that's how I, I for know. me. I didn't ruin the surprise. You're the one to let it go. I think people are knowing, though, that the, we've got Mr. Patrick Mahomes. Of course. Um, this is really just, just amazing. How about, I mean, you said you studied art. Mm -hmm. Have you had any contact from from uh, professors and they're like, you're doing what now? I mean, there's surely some folks that do this around, but I, mm -hmm. I don't imagine a lot. I mean, this is a unique skill. Yeah, so, yep. Yeah, this is definitely different. Uh, 
but as I, you, you know, I'm on social media like, like a lot of people, and I've noticed that uh, the, the craft of performance painting is starting to become a little bit more popular and a little bit more popular. And I think it's because when an artist sees somebody creating something uh, in person and live, they're captivated by it, they're, they're intrigued by it. Mm -hmm. And if you've got uh, a certain skill set, something in you says, hey, I think I can do that. And uh, that's how my craft as a uh, performance painter has grown is by watching other performance painters. Okay. And we, yeah, we, and, I mean, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And right. Inter interesting. And then to answer your other question, I have, uh, through, again, through social media, uh, one of the, there's uh, many not so great things with social media, but some of the, some of the positives and plus are reconnecting with old friends and, right. uh, from your past, and I've reconnected with some of my former teachers, and okay. they've seen my work uh, because I posted on social media, and, and I've, I've gotten uh, uh, some great feedback from them, and, and just how proud they are of a former student that is stuck with uh, their talent and gift as an artist right. and through all these years, and uh, so that's been uh, well, one I, way. I, I think it's just a great uh, metaphor for, for just, uh, you know, your mindset and, and mm -hmm. going after what you want and also understanding that, you know, what, what you think you're going to do in life, you know, sometimes you, you, you make a turn and you make a U-turn, you, you, you go a different direction completely and that's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And sometimes you go back to what you're doing and you're doing what you, 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 you're, you just make a change in what's going on because the you know the one constant I think in life is change and, and right. you know in the NFL not for long is what it stands for. I think, <laughs> true. And yeah. You never know what's going on. So well, yeah. I'll, I'll let you keep going here and we'll watch yep. as you're doing this. I don't know if you have anything left to do. I don't know where we get with that, but um, yeah, we're just about we're just about we're finished here. That. Yep. Yeah, I never saw myself uh, as a being a performance painter. This I'm just as surprised as anybody, any of my family or friends. Right. Are like I never saw this coming. I didn't either. It was an opportunity, an invitation that was presented to me. I initially turned it down. Uh, then I had a change of heart and I gave it a go. And even after that first time of per performing at, at that youth conference here in Kansas City, Missouri, I didn't think, you know, I, I found my ticket. I, f I found my thing. Uh, it was even a couple years later where somebody said, hey, that, that, that live painting thing, I think, it, I think it might have legs to it. Wow. So you might want to, I love your other stuff, but maybe give this a go and I think it could really take you somewhere and 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 so I, I took them up on that and uh, they couldn't have been any more any more right. Well that's awesome. So. Well Mike I appreciate uh, you allowing us to come down here to this this wonderful area <clears throat> again uh, in, in the West Bottoms in uh, Kansas City Missouri taking the time and you know talking to us about what you're grateful for and how you make a difference and you know really the the, the fact that you can take a skill like this and not only make a living, do what you love, but then help so many other people, I think is something to be commended, and I appreciate you very much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks. He's Mike Devis. I'm Kim Legam, and take care.